All right, welcome uh, to an unboxing here of uh, Worthington Publishing. You can barely see it here. Sorry about the glare. Uh, 1944 D-Day to the Rhine. It's been out a little bit of time. It kind of follows in the heels of their 1944 Battle of the Bulge. Um, and I had recently made a purchase of a number of Worthington games. I think four, two Civil Wars, and then... Uh, the 1944 series. I've also got Battle of the Bulge. I'll do that in another video. But this is D-Day to the Rhine, so my guess is this is obviously covering France 1944. From the invasion all the way to getting up to the Rhine River. I uh, don't know if it goes beyond, but we'll see. Because here's the map. Yeah, and this doesn't look like, you know, this looks like a higher scale than maybe some of the other games that kind of deep dive it. I think of the Mighty Endeavor... Um, Multi-Man Publishing, SCS, um, Fortress Europa, that's been reprinted too. So, um, But I've read good reviews and I decided let's pick this up. Um, so down here, another great battle, Dan Forte Fournay, Concepts Worthington's Holdfast series. I got a number of those games, those are blocked though. Fast playing D-Day game. Um, Game includes variable objectives. Okay, that's interesting. There's cards. I've looked at it. That's probably why it's got a lower solitaire setting, but I think that can be circumvented. Um, German player, let's see. German player will set your defenses to meet the Allied landing. Allied player will try and land, break out, and drive across France as quickly as possible. Can you cross the Rhine and break through the West Wall before Christmas? And then it looks like here's the Ruhr. So we're not going to Berlin, um, but... And here's some counters, and it looks like it's core level. It's pretty high up there. Um, but we'll break it out here. Mounted game board, two counter sheets, dice, rule book, battle objective cards, battle archive, order of appearance, yep, and a counter tray. A counter tray. That's cool. An actual counter tray. And there we go. We're leading with the map here. And yes, indeed, it is mounted, as we can see here. Um, I'll break this open in a second. Yeah, big hexes. Actually, uh, we can see right here, right away, yeah. These are big hexes. Um, oh, these are the cards, they probably say. I guess you secretly choose this at the beginning. Uh, this is allied. And am I going for the single thrust, which is what uh, Monty proposed, under him of course. Um, and then Eisenhower went with the broad front, I guess it's Bradley's here, which is what they did. Um, there's always debate back and forth which is better. Uh, and this one is just go for the Ruhr, where the German industry was. Nine turns. They're all nine turns. So I guess, yeah, you could pick these. Uh, this applies to the victory conditions. Okay. This is what may make the solitaire lower here. This is interesting. I haven't quite figured out. A record of your game plays here. It's a pad of paper. Nothing on the back. How'd you play? Who the allied access? What was the date? Game played. Variable object, full game, variable objectives, or they've got short scenarios. Nice, three of them. Um, and what was the victory? Uh, okay, I can keep a record. That's nice. All right, let's look. Nice big color allied turn track here. Wow, what's that on the back? So we got June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Goes to March of 45. Looks like monthly turns. And the reinforcements are actual core. Brit US, Brit US. Here's Patton. Shows up in August with the. Uh, I can't believe that's all of the Third Army. I guess they got core counters and then they got actual leader counters for the army. Patch was 7th Army over Dragoon. Yeah, Marseille. That's what I thought. Operation Dragoon, Southern France. So this must be the army, Third Army, Creer, the Canadians, um, Simpson, Ninth Army. These are the army, heck. Yeah, here's our uh, Airborne Corps, um, 22nd Corps. Okay, 
Okay, great. Uh, allied replacement pool. Okay, I'll have to look at this. This may be at start over here, if I can guess it. Monty's 21st Army Group, Creer, Dempsey, and some Corps counters. So it looks like a kind of a mix of Army Corps going on. Bradley's 12th Army Group, three Army Commanders. That's third. First Army under Hodges, ninth under Simpson, and then it looks like they got Corps counters too. Devers 6th Army, this was Operation Dragoon, Southern France, Patch, and some Corps, Airborne, and then the Free French. All right, nice. Not a lot of counters. They're pretty big. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Quick setup, Normandy close-up. So this is actually the setup on how you do it and where you do it. That's pretty helpful, I guess. Yeah. Yep, uh, not a lot of counters. Then we got the Germans. Um, wow, we got a German written down. The Germans are separate. Here's a replacement pool. Panzer Corps, Army Group H, Army Group B, Elite Corps. You can tell this is probably SS. Army Group G. That's interesting. Oh, Ardennes learning scenario. And then here's the full Arden to the end. So there's some setups there for the Germans. But then we have a German turn track also. Oh, look at all this SS that shows up. And of course, this is in the period of Battle of the Bulge. Um, yep, not a lot of student, airborne, Flieger, Flieger Corps, reinforcement placement. Counteroffensive variable reinforced, and then we have uh, 1944 standard setup. Okay, interesting that they're mixing these. Let's see. Quick setup, Normandy close up. Okay. So it looks like you got different scenarios here where you're just focusing on the initial Normandy invasion versus uh, the whole German setup. Well, and you can probably do alternate beaches too. So you got some flexibility there. Nice. Whoa, these are big counters. Um, let's take a look at this. Yeah, and uh, markers are circle. That's interesting. And one counter sheet here. Holy smoke. <laughs> That's it. I mean, just looking at this. These look like uh, garrison units. Here's your SS up here. And that's it. That's all the Allies right there. And then there's the Germans. There's more of them, but they're on the defense. They look like special markers there. Uh, let's see what the flip side looks like. Without popping one, yeah, it's reduced strength. Um, reduced strength units. Uh, these look similar too. So, not high counter density. That's what I would conclude from this here. <clears throat> and then we have the rules. Actually, we have two sets of the rules. And again, I'd look online to get the latest. Oh, and then we've got our counter tray with uh, interesting dice. I think there's a hit thing, and you, you can roll infantry or armor. Let me pop that real quick. Not a standard counter tray either. Yeah, these are all infantry. Hmm. I guess that's all the Germans can do, and then the Allies can get armor, air power, etc. So doing something interesting with the dice. I think it's kind of a hitting hit mechanism there. So, and you got a counter tray. Could come in handy. So let's take a look at the rules here. Um, Eleven pages, not counting the back. It's a terrain effects chart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, these look like different scenarios. Uh, DRC, dice rolled in combat. I guess the higher the number, the more dice you roll, the better hit you get. SP, the number of strength points of the unit, how many hits in combat it can take before it's eliminated. Core size units one or two, three or four for army. We saw that. Um, and movement point. There's the movement point right there. And unit type. Okay. Each hex is 25 miles. Uh, 
terrain effects are without cumulative. I'm thinking the time scale is monthly. I'm just not seeing it. Yep. Army units have two counters. Oh, wow. That's even less counters on the board there. A full army unit. Yeah, here's full strength. Flip it to reduced. Take another step. You go to the reduced here and then flip it again. So four steps. Fourth hit unit removed. Uh, Allied infantry armors have a maximum of four SP. Third army has five MP. Okay. Yeah. Normal Allied army can move four, but Patton, hell, yeah, he can go fast is five. German Panzer armies can go fast. Six. Um, corps have one counter each. Most infantry corps are five, but the mountain... Okay, well, I guess a corps can move faster. There may be a breakdown capability here. we got mountain infantry. Colors. Oh, the inner color defines what army group they are. Okay. And then we've got support units. Okay, Eastern Task Force Naval Unit. Western Task Force can support any U.S. unit. Looks like uh, our... Naval bombardment, we got bomber units, we've got airborne units. It looks like they get their own counter there, 82nd, 101st. <laughs> Until you combine them, I guess, into that airborne core we saw. Airborne operation procedure. Looks straightforward there. Resource uh, RP markers, that must be replacement points. Port capacity, yeah, allies need that. This looks like the counter-offensive, Battle of the Bulge, Supply Hidden, etc. Setup, um, Normandy Invasion, listed before the regular June turn. There is no RP cost to conduct it. And then Resolving the Normandy Invasion, apparently that's its own subset here before the game starts. Monthly game turns, German Reinforcement, Replacement. German activation, allied RP calculation, reinforcement replacement, allied activates units for movement, combat, checking for supply. So, looks like combined there. Uh, resource points and port capacity helps us. The more ports we capture for the allies, we got reinforcements, German reinforcements. Didn't see a stacking rule yet. The allied play company has no accessible vacant hex. Temporarily overstack in a beach hex or a port hex. Only the original unit in the hex can attack from that hex. But if it's at the end of the turn you're overstacked, they get pulled off. Okay. Replacement units. National replacement limits. Maximum two RPs. Four RPs for the U.S. France, there is no limit on replacement spending. Each monthly turn. Okay. Well, I guess you're in France, so you got plenty of people wanting to sign up. How to do movement, zones of control, got a strategic movement, allied motorized movement, German rail movement. Let me talk about how our score rolled on dice, panzer symbol, aircraft, etc. Um, combat is simultaneous, so both players roll for attack and defense at the same time. <clears throat> scores a hit on a panzer unit. If no panzer unit is printed, the hit is applied to an infantry unit. Wow. Panzer symbol scores a hit on a panzer unit. If no panzer is it infantry. Infantry only scores a hit on infantry, and I'm assuming blank scores on nothing. Allies use the blue die. Germans use the black die. There's a lot of blank spaces on that one. Um, let's see. Weather effect. Control of cities. Liberation. Here we go. Operation Dragoon. Invasion of Southern France, Army Group G. Um, Rundstedt's counteroffensive. I guess that's their code name for Battle of the Bulge. Variable reinforcements. Dietrich's Six Panzer Army. And then we're into victory. Eight pages. Or, or a little more than eight. So it looks like another one quick to get into. Uh, German Sudden Death. No Allied units on the continent at the end of any German turn. Oof, booted them off. Allied sudden death, executing, ex exiting army using tactical, not motorized movement in any of the three exit zones by the end of February. That's another sudden victim. Otherwise, they break down German major, minor, draw, allied, minor, allied major.
So, and then we go to optional rules. Quick start. The game begins with the Allies already ashore, so you can skip that Normandy invasion portion and just go with the campaign. That's tempting. And here's your variable objectives. Um, potentially, you can use those cards, so they're optional. So, single thrust, broad thrust, objective roar. Then we got the scenarios. Home by Christmas, June to November. Uh, Ardennes, December to the end. And then just a learning scenario. Um, I guess one turn. So we got three there. And then we got, this is an optional free invasion, so it looks like they have to come into Normandy in the standard game, but now they do open it up and allow you to invade somewhere else. And then they give you rules for each invasion zone. Uh, Anvil Dragoon, they accelerate it. Interesting. German Phantom Units, Fog of War. Um, then we got a replacement table. And then a terrain effects chart. So again, definitely a game. And I've got two copies of this, one for each player, I guess. Definitely a game we can get into here. Um, let me see, put the counters away. Let's see, did any of these charts have a... Well, you don't need a combat results table. It's based on dice roll and hits. And it looks like the only place the terrain effects chart is is on the back of the map, which is fine. I mean, back of the rules. So it's not on a player aid card. Um, but then again, let's do a quick look at the map here, which is going to be kind of hard to show with my present setup here. But big thing is these are big hexes. Big hexes. And yeah, we don't see southern France. Here's the edge of Switzerland down here. So Operation Dragoon, they probably just start appearing here. Patches 7th Army with a big free French contingent. They didn't participate a lot in the initial Normandy landing, but they did here. Here's a Brittany um, Peninsula. And here's your standard Normandy. And you do see the alternate. Alternate ones look like Brittany, Lower Normandy, Upper Normandy, which they didn't do. And then Pas de Calais. And then you can live on the edge and try and invade all the way up here in Belgium. Paris, pretty open terrain here. The rivers, of course, the, the Seine, I hope I pronounce it right. And then ultimately up here, I think we here's the Ardennes, um, Metz, and there we go to the end. Yeah, we just get to the edge of Germany, including, of course, the Ruhr, um, which can be an objective, too. You get points for that, too. Vienna, Berlin, oh, here are your exit hexes for sudden death. Going to Hamburg, going to Berlin, going to Berlin, and then there's a Vienna one way down here. So again, uh, yeah, it looks old school wargaming, like they say on uh, on the mat, on the uh, box. Playable in a in amount of time. That's uh, appealing here. So there we go. Um, Worthington Publishing Games, 1944. Um, D-Day to the Rhine, a not-too-complex game of uh, Battle for France here. And it's using hit dice here um, instead of your standard combat results table. And I think, we'll see, I don't think solitary suitability is that low, so we should be okay. Especially if you're not playing those optional cards. Um, so, yeah, this looks interesting. Again, this is another one, um, I don't think there's a Vassal Mod 4, and I don't remember finding a good scan of the map. And the problem I'm having, I, you know, mounted boards are great, but for my use, I can't scan them easily. Or take them to my office store and scan them, so I'm going to have to maybe work a little on a Vassal Mod for this. But, that being said, there we go. And again, that is Worthington Publishing's 1944 D-Day to the Rhine. And uh, if you like, click like. Comments appreciated, especially if you've played this. Um, and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, otherwise, I uh, hope to get this to the table soon, and we'll put it through its paces. Thanks for listening.